What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video will be part one in recreating the kind of adventure capitalist classic idle clicker style game and we're going to do it using Python and Pygame. So before I get started if you do find this or anything else on the channel useful feel free to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a ton and without any further ado let's get into it. So anytime you're going to uh, build a new game in Python, you want to import the Pygame module right away and then do the pygame.init um, function. And then uh, I always start by creating my game loop. So I create a variable called running and then uh, I'm going to put all of kind of the action. Um, I'm going to put all of the action for the game inside this like while running equals true logic and this is basically um, handling your exit and your quit conditions. So then you just go down and say for event in pygame dot. Ooh, wow, that is some bad typing for event in pygame dot event dot get. And then the first one you always want to put in here is just if event dot type equals pygame dot quit and then we're going to use the pygame built in um, just running equals false and then we're going to come down outside of the event circle and we're going to uh, just do pygame dot quit okay and so this is the bare minimum to create a game loop you're essentially saying while running is true do whatever it is we put inside the game loop, but then once running is false, go ahead and close out the app. This is just what's required to um, make the X button that auto populates in the top right, close your app when you're done. And uh, then um, to, to actually just have a screen, let's go ahead and come up here where we initialized it and let's go ahead and create a screen and that's gonna be screen equals pi game dot display dot set mode okay and let's define some variables uh, we're making something that's kind of like mobile phone sized so let's do 300 450 and then um, set the caption so that's pygame dot display dot set caption okay and then we are going to call this not adventure capitalist so I can't get in any trouble legally okay and then um, I'm gonna do something this is something I like to do at the beginning of like every game uh, I like to make a color library so that the whole game I'm not just dropping in um, like RGB values you totally can if you want but I pull in this um, this sort of set of colors for every game and I'll usually just select from these so if you want all these same colors as we go through I recommend just pause the video, copy these down real quick. They're RGB values. You can pull them off of the web if you want. Um, you can play around with the settings if you want, but I'm gonna be calling these colors fairly regularly throughout the app. So I recommend making yourself a color library. Um, and then we're gonna create a few more variables. So I'm gonna say that for this, the background is gonna be black. You don't have to do that with a variable if you don't want. Um, and then I'm gonna say frame rate equals 60 frame rate equals 60 and we'll call that in the clock and then we're going to use text a few times during this game so uh, i like to start by just calling out a uh, pi game font ahead of time as well so we'll do that here i pretty much always use free sans bold until i'm pretty much done with the game and i just want to play around with settings like changing fonts and seeing how that changes things around and then uh, let's go ahead and create a pi game timer. So this is actually how we're going to control the speed of the game to run it at 60 frames per second. So then you come back down into your game loop, your wall running, and we're going to do timer dot tick at our frame rate. Okay. So if you're completely baffled on where all of this is coming from and you don't just want to blindly follow through, there is a very like introduction to pi game course on my channel. You can definitely check that out first if you want to get some background or you can just follow along and if you have specific questions let me know about it in the comments uh, below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But okay so the last couple things we need to do just to get um, something on the screen we'll do screen.fill with the background color that we defined and then a zero for some reason. 
And then uh, the last thing we'll do is we'll flip it. So pygame.display.flip. And uh, that's, just, that's just actually writing everything onto the screen. And let's see, that's probably all we need to do to just get a black screen. Yep, there we go. And we see we've got our title, it's black, it's 300 pixels by 450, and the little X button in the top right closes out of the code. So that's pretty good. Now let's actually start drawing some objects onto the screen. That'll be, I think, a little bit um, more clear and a little bit more fun towards like what we're actually doing. So um, I think since we're going to create five tasks um, and we're essentially going to uh, have them all be pretty much the same, let's go ahead and create a function called draw task and that'll sort of tell us what we need to pass in as we're defining it here. Um, so I'm picturing like a button on the left side of the screen. Let me just pass this real quick and then let's uh, talk about it. I'm picturing like a circular button that you'll click on the left side of the screen and when you click it, um, it'll kind of have like a progress bar on the right side of the screen as it's loading. Um, and once it finishes, that's what actually gets you like points and money. So as we get more and more into the game, um, we'll add the functionality that actually makes it playable. But let's start by creating our objects that we need. So um, let's start with pygame.draw.circle and we're going to put that on the screen. We're going to pass in a color, so there's the first variable that we'll need. We'll make all of our tasks a different color. And then um, for location, let's put it at 30. That'll get it away from the left side of the screen just a little bit. And then let's pass in a Y coordinate for, um, for height. And so essentially they'll look exactly the same from top to the bottom of the screen. They'll just change uh, Y coordinate. So Y coordinate, and then let's make these circles uh, circumference of 20 and five thick. So they'll be hollow. That might be radius of 20. Yep. Um, okay, so that is gonna be a circle. Now let's put the rectangle down next to it. <clears throat> pygame.draw.rect and we're gonna do we're gonna put it on the screen we're gonna make it the same color as the circle and now rectangles need um, four coordinates passed in so uh, since the center of the circle is at 30 and it has a radius of 20 that's gonna push it all the way out to 50 on the right so let's go with 70 to have a little bit of a gap between the circle and the rectangle and then let's, since uh, that circle is the center point and we, this um, for a rectangle, you define a corner. Let's do Y coordinate minus 15 so that it'll be essentially at the same height. Let's make it 200 long and 30 tall, okay? And so that's gonna be a solid rectangle of the same color that we call in. And so what I want to do as well to make it look like it's a loading bar is I want to draw a rectangle inside of that that is going to be um, just black so that it looks like a, a hollow loading bar rather than um, rather than a full like colorful uh, rectangle. So we're going to um, add some coordinates 75 so it'll be a little bit further to the right and then Y coordinate minus 10 so it'll sit inside of the rectangle and then it'll be 190 by 20. All right, and as soon as we draw this onto the screen, it'll all make sense. So if you're following along um, line by line, just uh, just keep following along. It's gonna look um, it's gonna look pretty good once we call this. So let's go ahead and actually call one here. Let's start by drawing green. So let's do draw task and then we give it a color and a Y coordinate. So let's give it color of green and then for Y coordinate, let's give it 50. And let's just see if that puts a circle and the rectangles on the screen. Yeah, so I think that looks pretty good um, right there. And the nice part about doing it as a function rather than writing all that code for green is I'm gonna take this exact same code here and we're gonna do red, um, orange, we'll do white and we'll do so let's see, red, orange, let's go with 
white and purple so this is kind of where if you're following along and you want to play around with those settings and make them different colors or different rgb values like do, do that make this game your own whatever uh, you're going to enjoy looking at i'm sure my colors aren't going to do it for everybody so um take a look here i mean i just uh, you know using that one function we created i was able to um give it you know just five different y values in five different colors and we get this very colorful game where we've got what we'll create is going to be five buttons on the left and then five loading bars on the right so that was pretty quick um, i think that looks pretty sweet let's see what else can we do in this um, first video why don't we give a value to each button so that'll be um that'll be an actual like uh, uh showing how much money each of them is worth so we're gonna have to come up to where we define variables in the beginning and let's make another section called game variables and let's go ahead all those colors that we just made let's um, give them a value so there's going to be green value red value and you can play around with these if you want um i'm gonna just go one two three four five to start because uh my my theory with games is you got to make them functional um and fun to play before you really worry about like um little modifiers and difficulty and things like that so let's get this functional as fast as possible and all right so we just created the values so we're gonna pass that in as well and we'll call it value and what we're gonna do is we'll call this my value inside the inside the function and we're also going to draw the actually let's call it value text you can call it whatever you want but i think that'll make more sense what we're going to do now is um we're going to use pygames font dot render and if this is your first time seeing um like text being drawn onto a game with pygame it is a little bit weird uh, you have to render the font and then draw it onto the screen it doesn't just know how to write text so you have to do it in two steps so that's why we defined a font up above and that's why you do it with font.render and uh, so you give the value we're going to use the string version of the value so you have to um, convert value to a string here because it's looking for a string and value is an integer uh, or float by default and then define a color for your text which will make white <clears throat> and then you actually put it onto the screen and since everything so far has been in terms of that y coordinate we need to do the same here so we'll put it at 16 which should put it just inside the circle that we defined and then y coordinate minus 16 should do it again uh, actually let's do minus 10 and that should put it just inside the circle and then the last thing we have to do is actually the three places that we called it here green value red value and orange value we have to actually pass those values in for everybody oh i gotta fix my green value there <laughs> So anytime you say uh, you're going to do something new inside the function, you just need to make sure anywhere that calls that function, you update what you're actually passing in. So let's see there. All right. So here you can see like this will be the cache value of running each text uh, of running each task. And we've drawn it inside the button for each um, game to be run. So we've created the shell of our game. Uh, in just under 15 minutes here and in the next video we'll take a look at actually clicking those buttons and having the progress bar move across the screen and updating your score so hopefully you found this tutorial useful uh, keep an eye out for the next videos coming on the channel and be sure to check out the rest of the content we have on Lamaster Tech while you're there if you found this or any of that content useful again I really appreciate a like on the video subscribe to the channel and be sure to let me know uh, with any questions or concerns in the comments below I'll get back to you right away and as always good luck with your code and thanks for watching thanks bye